te nga tātou e te whare. Aku mihi tō tai ko tō tātou nei atua, o nana nei hākai ka mea kātua. Aku mihi tua rua ki te mana o te nei whenoa ngā i tua huriri, nai a nei te mihi nunui ki a koutou. Ko koutou te mana whenoa, ko koutou te mana moana. Ko tua huriri ki uta, ko tua huriri ki tai, nai a nei te mihi huika i ruki a koutou. Kei raro i te mana o tēnei kaupapa, mihara rā wātū. A huri nō ki te reo tua tahi o te kaupapa nei, nai a nei te mihi aroha, mihi whakamana ki tō tātou nei āntsi aroha. Kia ora. We live in a country where our biggest industry is under attack because the impact is having on our environment. Where the fabric of our nation's identity, Great Britain's little farm, is being tested because of the effects on our rivers, our aquifers, and our oceans. And our countries are part of a world facing even bigger problems. Climate change, greenhouse gases, and the ever-present hangover and ideologies of colonization. Everybody says we don't know how to live sustainably, but we actually do. We've got almost 700 years of knowledge on how to live sustainably. So maybe we need to look to the past, to our indigenous knowledge, so that we can so that we can walk together as one into the future. E o kūrakatira, a te whakaroko mai, lend me your ears. Picture a time before needing to earn a wage, a time way before the need to make a mortgage repayment or even the need for the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> there was another way of life, an indigenous way of life. Young or old, we all had a role to play, each generation saving space for one another's mana authority, integrity, because, after all, without each other, we would not survive. By the way, guys, our ancestors and the environment didn't just survive, they thrived. Anything we needed to know, we looked to the greatest university of them all, the environment. History's greatest professors lived and taught there too. Rakinui, our sky father, Papatua nuku, our Mother Earth, and Takaroa, our many, many oceans. If we went back to school today, I'm sure they'd have something very important to tell us once more. This was a time before labels, fences, and GIS layers. Mananui's people, my people, were there. Kati Huikai. Kati Huikai's home is called Kokodarata in the northern banks of the Banks Peninsula, Canterbury. New Zealand. Imagine, first generation, virgin native timber with huge podocarp forests. Insects and birds found nowhere else on this planet. Wetlands ranging from North Canterbury to South. This home had it all. Our home, our Tūraka Waiwai. Here in Te Waipo Namu, or the South Island, it's very cold and very harsh. There's only three months for us to take advantage of an abundance of protein blasting into life. Whether it flew, grew, or swam, it had a purpose to us. We had harpoka holes, or groper holes, kilometers out in front of our harbors. Every day, we routinely returned to those holes and located them out to sea with pinpoint precision. No nav man, Google Maps, or charters needed, my friends. <laughs> we understood the ways and cycles, the oceans, tides, and protein migrations like no one else. Our people were so onto it, we revolutionized the food preservation process by way of poha, way before refrigeration. Poha is essentially vacuum packing food into bull kelp, utilizing the rich fats from the food to aid this process of preservation by making it airtight. Some food could last for years this way. Long before it was called the Banks Peninsula, we called it Te Pātaka Arākai Hautu. Te Pātaka Arākai Hautu. A pātaka is an elevated food house, pantry if you will. And Rākai Hautu was an ancestor of mine that came here on the Uruwa Waka, 
near on a thousand years ago. Give or take. By levitating our pantries high above the fly line, we could stockpile our food for a long time without it getting spoilt. You know, others give names like Lake Ellesmere. We give names strategically like the Kita Ika, Arakai Hautu, or the fish basket of that same ancestor of mine, Rakai Hautu. Yeah, we're starting to see it now, eh? Pantry, fish basket. Now, for any indigenous nation on this planet to live next to the food resources like we did was like living next to the supermarket and the fish and chip shop. <laughs> it was the ultimate Turaka Waiwai. Towards the end of this harvest season, it was time to engage in the next set of responsibilities to our unified survival. We traded with extended family groups all across the Waipaunamu, for tuna or eel, for hapuka or gopa, for paunamu or greenstone. You know, this way of life is more than simply cultural or holistic. It's practical, it's social, it's physical, it's intergenerational, it's economical, but most importantly, it's sustainable. How can we get back to this concept? Let me tell you about mahikakai. Mahikakai is an indigenous lifestyle that prioritizes human and environment coexistence and prioritizes that need for balance. A literal English translation is working food, but for us kaitahu, it's much, much more. It's the cornerstone of our ability to harvest sustainably from our resources, to put food in our bellies and clothing on our backs, to make medicines to heal our people. There's an economical value in mahinga kai too. Mahinga kai is a high value product with a narrative that starts with community and environment that feeds the world. What a brand. Mahika Kai says that our ability to provide for ourselves is a basic human right. It says we can live in accordance to the resources as and when they're made available to us by Papa Tuanuku. It says we can live sustainably if we understand we have to work together. How many wetlands do we need to drain before we realize those wetlands clean our water? How many trees do we need to cut down before we realize those trees provide our oxygen? How much longer are we prepared to sit around and watch a society that institutionally disadvantages its own people to give an advantage to certain racial groups? How much longer? Let me tell you a little bit about the work that I do. In 2017, some bright sparks at Environment Canterbury decided to create some rules to help us protect the significance that that fish basket has to us, kaitahu. It protects mahika kai resources for all New Zealanders. These include land use consents, farm environment plans, and an auditing process to enforce compliance. Over the past decade, this region, the Canterbury region, has been on quite a journey. We've made some bold goals around pollutant reductions to address our land and water quality issues. We've made some bold commitments on how we're going to implement those goals. However, in my opinion, the significant step change comes as we've made an even significant commitment to protecting how significant our land and water is to our nation's first relationship. Takata Finua the first people of this land. I was tasked with roughly 350 farms. All farms were needing to gain a land use consent, a consent to operate. In order to get this done, I had to establish strong and enduring relationships with private landowners, farming groups, 
industry groups, universities, and anyone who would bloody listen to me. <laughs> I quickly realized that my friends had no understanding around the nine land sales of the South Island, or what promises were made to kaitahu that directly affect this work. My friends had little to no understanding around the Treaty of Waitangi, and felt very confronted at times, often leading to guilt, as one realizes for the first time the real privilege one has in this nation. Rape, terrorism, and genocide. Rape, terrorism, and genocide all happened in this country long before March 2019. And it's time we learned our history. This made me think, imagine how evolved we'd be if we knew our history. Pretty simple, eh? Imagine how far ahead we'd be if we pulled the fences down surrounding our ugly past, reserved space for one another's mana, and chose to embrace it. And you know why? Because my farmers can get their heads around it, see value, and really, really take pride in it. And you can too. Imagine in New Zealand, that's brave enough to shed its monocultural past and present ways, that values indigenous solutions, you know, because after all, what's good for Māori is good for the world, because if there's no planet, there's no people. You know, imagine if we were actually successful in achieving biculturalism, as our treaty intended us to in the mid-1800s. We may finally catch up to where my tipuna, my ancestors came from, a thousand years ago. <laughs> we may finally understand that we have the knowledge to live sustainably. We may finally find a way to live together on this earth as one. Ha <laughs> ha